Father, we worship you this morning. We come before you. God, knowing you are Lord of glory. We ask you to bless this time. God, to bless those that hear. Give us eyes that see, ears that hear, Father. Hearts that are soft. Let us enter in this morning, Jesus. I pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. They were rocking and reading on the streets of Jerusalem. People thought they were crazy.
ahead, hit that. <laughs> Don't make it bad. 
that floods my soul Fill me up till I overflow with hope
God works every time when I drink it. We are on. Now, if I can just focus. <laughs> Lost my mustard seeds. My knees are weak this morning. I have decided this year I just want to get, I want to get so far in to his presence that I can't find my way out. I believe that Jesus can give me everything that I need rather than me try and get it for myself. He can give me happiness when I can't find it. He can be the one that gives me completion when I'm empty. He can be my strength when I'm weak. And he can be my joy when I'm weeping. He can bring everything that I need. Scripturally, we're told that it says, they that will to be rich in this life pierce themselves through it with many sorrows. But there's nothing wrong with being rich. It's just trying to will to do that rather than accepting every heavenly blessing that God gives us because he says we're blessed with how many? With all heavenly blessings. We have, our problem today is faith in God rather than faith in man. Faith in God rather than faith in myself. Now, I must have a little faith in myself in order to say, Alan, you can do this, but I do it through the gift and the grace of God rather than through the strength and will of Alan that uh, doesn't get me too very far. Years ago, I thought, 
If everybody knew how rotten I really was, I wouldn't have a friend left. I really did go through that when I was about 22 or 23 years old because I realized I'd probably done everything wrong that a person could do. There may have been a few other things, but I'd rather not even entertain the thoughts. <laughs> but I realized that I was a sinner, that I had come short of his glory. And it says that all have sinned, no one excluded, and come short of his glory. But he came that I might have life and have life more abundant, even though I had sinned and come short of his glory. So I realized I had somebody that could give me more, that being Jesus. Everything rests in his hand. Jesus said it like this. When he resurrected, he had already been crucified, buried. Some people don't even know he went to hell, took the keys of death and hell away from Lucifer. Now we know him as the devil. He's not even worthy of the name of Lucifer because he's fallen, he's not resurrected. And Jesus took that stuff and he came back with the keys and he said, all power is given unto me. He didn't say most power. He didn't say power, but he said all power. Everything rests in the hands of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about our happiness, our peace, our prosperity, our calamity. Everything rests in his hands. And, and he says, nobody that he loves is without chastening. And many people wonder, what was me? What the heck am I going through? I'm going through hell. Well, sometimes God's just working with us a little bit. And say, well, I don't like that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like going through the, fire, through the fire. You know, I don't like having to be straightened out. But nobody likes it. Paul said, no, no chastening is, is joyful. He said, but it's grievous, but it brings forth fruit. It causes the right change to come into our lives. Well, I tell you, when the hand of God gets on you, there's not much you can do about it because he's the God that doesn't leave us or forsake us. So even though we're going through the things, we don't even want his help in. Don't shout me down when I say this. It's human nature not to want help in a few things. We say, let me just have that area. You help me in this. You say, Alan, I'm not saying, yeah, yeah, come on now. It's when we pray, we're always asking God, can you help me do this? Can you help me do that? And we never go to some of the realms where we need, really need some help. You know, it's, well, I don't want help with that. <laughs> you know? I think that's okay, God. Just help me get to where I'm going. He says, yeah, if I'm going to help you get to where you're going, we're going to have to go back to this area you don't want to go to. That one's kind of dark, Alan. I, I, I see that you don't see. Other people don't see, but I see this crystal clear. There's some light. Let me shine my light there. No, 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 no. <laughs> don't, don't shine the light there, Lord. <laughs> Not while anybody's looking. <laughs> God who keeps covenant, not because of our righteousness, but because of his. Well, glory to God. I want to go to Romans 14, 13. And um, I had a few things on my mind this morning and um, prayed for a little help and guidance. And things just begin to come on, the lights. <laughs> you ever wanted answers and you didn't quite get them? He's like, well, I'm not sure that's an answer. I, I see that scripture, but, but I'm not sure that's an answer for me right now. Well, let's try this one on, see if the hat fits or the shoe fits. Romans 14, is it 14? Yeah, 14, 13. It says, let us not therefore judge one another anymore, semicolon, stop. What in the heck is that all about? <laughs> Let us not, therefore, judge one another anymore. We're going to come back to that. I'm going to find a bookmarker. And I just want to run over to Revelation 2, 1. 
I hate to run us around. I used to get so upset with pastors that did that. And go with me here, go with me there, back and forth. And say, oh my God, I can't remember what we're doing anymore. You're running me all over the place. But this all has a purpose. Did I say 2-1? I did. Oh yeah, it's about a church. <laughs> and to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holds the seven stars in his right hand and who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. The angels are the stars and the candlesticks are the seven churches. He walks among the churches and he's got the angels in the palm of his hand. Angels are assigned to churches and angels are assigned to people. We are people that are born again. We have ministering angels assigned to us, to the heirs of salvation, before we've even ever made our commitment to Jesus. The angels have been assigned heirs of salvation. Assigned. They're there to fulfill the will of God in our lives. But So the angels are there and, and the churches are there and Jesus is the one walking in the midst and he says, write this. He who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks to two says, I know your works and your labor and your patience. That's a lot to say. Works, labor, and patience. Most of us got a little works. Most of us got a little labor. But some of us don't got a clue about patience. <laughs> and say, don't ever say, yes, I've developed my patience because God will help you see the truth. <laughs> <laughs> who works in our labor I know your works your labor your patience and how you cannot bear them which are evil now we're getting to the point that I want to make today the works the labor and the patience are good but now he throws in this one other thing and says you can't bear those that are evil and the point today is keep your eyes on the things that are good Here's the fruit that comes from knowing and not being able to bear those that are evil. Jesus came to save those people that are bound by evil and to lead them to repentance. But here it says, you can't bear those that are evil and you has tried them. What did they do? They became judges and they tried them. And, you know, they say they are apostles and are not and you have found them liars well that's pretty good work guys you found out that somebody had sin <laughs> let's go on and you has born and has patience for my name's sake you've labored and you didn't even faint and then he says but nevertheless I have something against you because you have left your first love how did they lose their first love? Back to Romans 2. <laughs> How did we start Romans 2, 13? Let us therefore not judge one another, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. God wants us to help our brother, not to accuse our brother, because all have sinned, and all have come short of his glory. God is telling the church of Ephesus, you have left your first love to become judges of other people. You had some good works, you had some labor, you had some patience, and you did these things with zeal, you didn't faint, but then you did some extra work. You went and decided to check these people out to see what they're worth, to see if they have sin, to see. And you done a good job. You found out that they lied. You, you found their sin. Did anybody remember Ham and Shem? Weren't they sons of Noah? What happened when Noah's sin was revealed? One of his sons decided to show everything off. Hey, look, Bob's naked on the bed. And there was a curse that came out of that. And the other one turned around and it took the sheets backwards and covered their father's nakedness up. 
to say, I love my father. I do not hate him. He made a mistake, but I don't want everybody to see what happened. Listen, this is still the heart of Jesus today to come and take away man's sin. Paul is saying, let us not judge one another. We're in Romans 14, 13. Let us therefore not judge one another anymore. So let's get past the judgment, he's saying. But rather... That no man put a stumbling block. How many people not put a stumbling block? Nobody. That no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall. In other words, don't hope for, hope for your brother to fall. Don't hope for somebody to drop. Many people, they say, well, the church over there, that big mega church, they don't preach against this, they don't do that. What are they hoping for? They're hoping for that pastor to fall. That's really what they're hoping for. Well, they don't do this. They don't do that. Well, why the heck are you telling me? I'm not him. You know, I don't go there. You don't go there. Who appointed you? What's going on? You know, Jesus at one time, his disciples came to him and they said, hey, so they're preaching a different doctrine than we are. John, John's got this doctrine going. We got this. And he says, leave that alone. To his disciples, leave it alone. He says, you know, uh, he that's with me is with me, and he that's against me is against me. He said, as long as they're preaching his kingdom, that's a good thing. People are getting saved. You know, where we came into our biggest calamity is men and women was in the garden when we decided we needed to know good from evil. All we really needed was obedience. That's all. The willing and the obedient eat the fat of the land. And that's the reason they could have anything they wanted. They could do anything they wanted to do. There was no sin in the garden. There was no, I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying. There was no sin in the garden. Whatever Adam and Eve did was okay. They didn't need a judge. They were not being judged. God wasn't looking down for a mistake. He just made one provision. Don't touch the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's my business. That was his tree. Guard the tree. Don't eat from it. I don't need more judges in my garden. I am the one who decides good from evil. Don't you know that in the book of Isaiah, God says, I am God. I do good, I create evil. That's my business, not yours. Y'all are mighty quiet today. Y'all do know that's in the Bible, right? <laughs> Most people don't know it. I had a friend, I said, he said, oh, I can't believe that's in there. And so he goes to another friend, he says, I'm going to make a bet with you. He says, you know, in the book of Isaiah, it says that God does evil. He creates evil. And he creates good. And the guy says, that's not true. And he says, well, I'll bet you $50. And his friend agrees and bets him $50. Then he showed it to him and he wouldn't pay up. There's your evil. <laughs> but that's God's business. The, the evil part, God can handle because he's God. There's sometimes things need to be dealt with that are evil. It's kind of like killing a chicken for supper. Y'all will get this in a minute. To the chicken, that's evil. <laughs> but to us, it's good. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you got the cows painting signs for Chick-fil-A. <laughs> eat chicken, don't eat beef. <laughs> Eating beef is evil. <laughs> Just ask the cows at Chick-fil-A. Well... You got it. Finally. That's God's business. Good and evil, God. All we ever needed was to be obedient. And then there wasn't sin. But when we begin to be judges for other people of what is good and what is evil, then we get confused. Did you look that up? <laughs> Where's it at? Isaiah 45.7. Read it. Hang on, hang on. Can you read it out loud? Isaiah 45. Did you look it up? Okay, let's see. 
Oh, I love this. It's the large print vision. <laughs> From the light and create darkness, Lord, there is none else. Oh, excuse me. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So most people don't get it. But, but see, that's God's business. That's his business. This is not ours. You know what's our business? To be in right, right standing with him so we don't get to evil. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Whoever wakes up in the morning, God, I wish I had some evil in my life. You know, we don't do that. Nobody wants the repercussions of that. We all want good and we can know him as our father, the father that protects us. And when the evil one comes after us, he might just dilly out a little evil to him. He said, then I like that he creates a little evil. <laughs> he created Lucifer. He's evil. He said, I don't so much like that. I don't either. But he's got a purpose. Our purpose is to not let him interfere in our lives. But his purpose in the book of Revelation, you know, that he comes to try the nations for a thousand years. That's a purpose. That's not my business. I don't like that part. But I love God. So I accept that part. My deal is to walk close to God so I'm not in the middle of that temptation. Well, is that in the Bible? Yeah, it's in the, it's in the book of Revelations too. It says there's a certain church. He says, I'll keep you from the hour of temptation that comes on the whole earth. And not only will I do that, I'll give you to eat the hidden manna. When everybody else is digging and beating the bushes for a job, for a dollar, for whatever it is they need, they will not find it but the children of God. He says, I'll give you the hidden manna. It's hidden. He's giving it. Is anybody out? I think I'm sweating. Lord have mercy. Whew. Let us therefore, verse 13, judge, uh, let us not therefore judge one another, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall into his brother's way. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. Oh, my God. Now I remember what the whole message was about. Isn't that funny? Sometimes you just got to run around till you get there. There's nothing unclean of itself. Alan, did you really say that? Yeah, I did. I like oysters. People say, those are bottom dwellers. That's going to kill you. But I'm going to tell you something. If I pray for an oyster, it's good for me. If I pray for a crawfish, it's good for me. Alan, do you believe that? Yeah, that's why they don't kill me. He said, somebody died. They, they believed that they knew they were doing wrong. Well, that's the problem. They thought they was doing wrong. They never believed in the prayer. They prayed to get that food blessed. Jesus said, whatever you pray for. Paul, when he was lowering down unclean animals, and he is our Peter, excuse me, getting the vision, he said he got it three times. Down it comes, full of animals, about it goes. And he said, no, Lord, I never touch those unclean things. God says, no, Peter, slay and eat. Eat that unclean thing. But before you eat it, let me bless it. And you get the blessing on what that is. And God says, now it's blessed. You can have it. I like oysters. I like crawfish. <laughs> I like fat. On a steak, most people say that fat's bad for you. No, 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 no. Uh-uh-uh. Do you believe God can bless fat? Yeah, I do. I even got faith that God liked fat because when he was asking for offerings way back in the Old Testament, he says, you do this, quarter this up, chop this up, you put that on the grill, and you cook it for a savor to me, but save the fat for me. God likes fat too. Yeah. You know what? It's fun to know the Bible. It really is. I woke up this morning early, early, and I was digging in the Bible. But they want exact words. It irritates me. Because it'll tell you, that, that ain't in the Bible, that ain't in the Bible. You got to have your capital on it, stuff right. You got to have your phrasing right. You can't get anything wrong or it says it doesn't exist. And I keep going, no, that exists. Blah, 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 blah. And finally, I find that I, say, I knew that existed. But if you don't know your Bible, it's Bible before you get into Bible studies. 
Am I making sense? Because you say, I know it's there. It's engrafted. It's in me. I just don't know where I got to find it. And I found it. I don't want to put a stumbling block in our brother's way. As I know, and I'm persuaded by Jesus that there is nothing unclean that esteemeth anything to be unclean to him it is unclean. Oh, my goodness. So, does that mean that if we don't believe things are clean, then they're not? You see, that's a stumbling block. Somebody says, no, 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 but it says right here in the Old Testament, don't eat that oyster. Oh, wait a minute. I just read where I can eat that oyster. Because God cleaned it for me. He said, well, that oyster looks pretty ugly. Guts everywhere, green. I said, yeah, but that's good guts. He said, oh, that's terrible. What about that crawfish head? You going to suck the juice out of it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get over it, man. It's good. It's, a, it's all good. When God blesses it, it's good for you. But to him that esteems anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. If you don't believe it, don't receive it. But if you do believe it, receive it with God's blessing. But if your brother be grieved, now, now here we go to the stumbling block. Some people I don't eat crawfish in front of or an oyster. Now I probably grieve somebody that's still under the old law, but I'm for that. You know, I'll eat seed cake with you or whatever it needs to be. You know, and, and there are people I don't even eat meat in front of because they're vegan, vegan, whatever you call it. You know, they, they don't believe in eating meat. That's fine. That's okay. I don't want them to stumble. And I hate to say it over the airways, but every now and then I'll drink a, a little bit of wine. Blend and I drank wine two or three times in 40 years. And I've had a few glasses of wine since then. You say, Alan, that's bad. No, it's not. It's bad if I get somebody to stumble and I'm doing it. If somebody else isn't going to drink wine, I'm not going to drink wine. But if somebody says, I wish you would have a glass of wine with me, and they're a good person, I will drink a glass of wine with them. Maybe not a very big one, but I have a little bit. You say, is that wrong? No, it's not wrong. It's wrong to make people stumble. Jesus talked to the Pharisees about this stuff and says, you choke on a doggone gnat and you swallow a stinking camel hole. What's wrong with this picture? Everybody's quiet. Choke on a gnat, swallow a camel. He's talking about getting the law all twisted up and messed up. You won't walk over here because you're afraid of breaking the law, but you let somebody starve to death while you got a million dollars in your pocket. Did I just say that? But am I telling the truth? And so we get our laws mixed up. There's a law of life in Christ Jesus, and it sets me free from the law of sin and death. Set you free from the law of sin and death. The law of life in Christ Jesus to love my brother as myself. Not to want to see somebody stumble, but to want to see them blessed and forgiven. Glory to God. But if your brother be grieved with your meat, nor walkest thou in uh, not charitably or in love, destroy him not with your meat for whom Christ died. Not, he's not talking about Christ dying for the meat. He's talking about Christ dying for the brother. Don't eat the meat that offends him. And this all goes back to when meat was offered to idols and stuff like that. Yeah, and people were saying, well, that was offered to an idol. And Paul was saying, I don't care. It's dead. <laughs> you know, that idol's not real. You think because he offered this meat to a piece of wood that is really bad? As I know that God's cleansed this. You know, that curse isn't going to hit me. But he says, you know what? If your mind's not there, if your conscience isn't there, I don't eat meat. You'll never see me do it. That's a man after God's heart. That's the reason most of the New Testament was written by him. There was a need for this type of teaching. There was a need for this type of understanding. Today, we have a church of offenses just about everywhere. Somebody's speaking something against somebody. 
rather than speaking love. And love is how we get things done. You never hate people into the kingdom. How, what kind of doctrine would that be? <laughs> well, glory to God. Whew. Let none then, uh, excuse me, let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, or it says, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in for he that in these things serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved and I, I know I'm reading this wrong. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. God wanting us to bring edification to each other, not to be judges of each other. My God, I have never met a perfect person. Everybody said, well, I don't do that. Well, let's talk about what you do do in private, in secret. Well, uh, no. Well, that's what you want to do for them. You know, they're not here to protect yourself. You want to... Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Jesus knows all these things that people say and do in the secret places, in the places where they think they're alone. And I'm not talking about uh, sins of, of, of each other. I'm talking about these things of words that are spoken and ideas and thoughts that are spoke over other people's lives. I'm going to tell you something. There's people that have hurt me so bad that I don't know if I'll ever get over it and I still speak blessings over them. I do. Why? Because I want the blessing. I want the blessing. <laughs> if there's anything I want, it's more of God in my life. There is nothing to compare to the blessing of God. I see Jesus feeding 5,000 families standing at the side of the sea. That's a lot of people. He asked his disciples, what do we got to feed these people with? There's a couple bags of bread and a couple fish. I'm doing Alan's version. Not much. And he says, well, you know, break it up and hand it out. And they're probably looking at him like, dude's lost his mind. But before he handed out, let me see that. And he holds it up. So this is where he gave a public demonstration of the difference between his blessing and no blessing. And he gave thanks. He says, thank you, Father. You're in control. Thank you for the blessing. I believe this is enough. Go ahead, pass it out, guys. And it just keeps giving and giving, multiplying and multiplying. Comes back more than what it left. Did you know that God doesn't change? <laughs> that means we can do that today with everything that we have. Oh, we have so many people preaching contrary, preaching works of the flesh rather than works of faith. Yay! Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. With a rod and a staff, they comfort me. <clears throat> For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. I like that, verse 17. Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, that's what I want. Oh. I have a hard time finding Titus. Where is Titus? Is it right after Philippians? Oh, Timothy. Oh, look, I found it. Timothy Titus. I have Timothy Itis. <laughs> so I turned to Titus to heal my Timothy Itis. Titus 1.15. Oh, no wonder I hit two. I said 115 is wrong. There's a misprint in my Bible. 
because I was reading 2.15. Yeah, no, it's Paul is talking about the same thing, the old law versus the new law. And he comes up and he says this, and this just rings so true in my spirit today. Titus 1.15 says, Unto the pure all things are pure. You see, remember the book of Revelation? Ephesus Church, he said, You lost your first love. How'd they do that? Judging people, looking at other people's sin. Say, so, you know what? I found out you're bad. I found out, you ever found a church that's perfect? When you go there, it won't be anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it? Whoa, I never thought about it that way. <laughs> Unto the pure, all things are pure. How do I keep a pure mind? I got to quit judging people. I got to start looking at God. And figure, when you figure out you are loved by God, all that judgment crap goes away. Did I say crap? Yes, I did. I could say something worse, but that ain't my way of doing it. That's stepping out, baby, when I say that word. Felt kind of good. <laughs> But all that stuff, it just goes away when you look at God and understand that God is love, God loves me, and God came to set me free from the law of sin and death. He came that I might have life and that I might have life more abundantly. He did not come to condemn me. He came to set me free. I must learn to want freedom for others to receive freedom for myself. If I don't want freedom to others, then I cannot find freedom for myself. My mind is defiled because all I can think about is their corruption. And thinking about corruption is corruption. I wish I could talk backwards, but I can't. So I'd rewind that and play it back. But, <laughs> but we get corrupted and defiled by thinking on the wrong things. A lot of times I see my brother or my sister sin and I want to go there and say, you know, if they hadn't have done this, this wouldn't have happened. They, and all of that is corruption. Instead of saying, God bless them. That I might walk in that blessing myself. People wondering today, how did I get in the condition I'm in? Why are things so hard for me? Why do I not have the love that I need to have in my heart? Have you given love? Have you made it easy for somebody else? Have you learned to help the person that really does have a need? Are you trying to help the person that might can help you? The old thing about million dollar churches and still the poor, that's real. But still, why do we look at that the way that we look at it? Many times God does tell people build that facility. You know, and who are we to judge? Why? God is rich. There's nothing that he can't do. There's nothing that he doesn't own. He's already said everything that's been made and created, I created. He said, no, men built that. But who gave him the knowledge? Who gave him the wisdom? Who imparted those things to it? See, it all came from him. It's kind of like when we build a computer and put a formula into the computer and then something pops out of that computer that we formatted it to do. We are kind of like the little God that created that comes forth the menu out of that computer while well, he did that to us. Many people may not know and understand, might not even like what I'm about to say, but we're nothing more than computers that have intelligence that God has created. He's given us a flesh and blood body, but he's the one that imparted his breath to operate this. We work off 60 to 70 millivolts DC. Most people don't know and understand that. 
I made that uh, discovery on my own. I didn't read it in a science book. Just one day, I took a millivolt meter, and I had it, and I held it, and I said, oh, look at there, 60 volts. Well, actually, 60 millivolts, and it was on DC. So I'm 60 millivolts, but did you know we hit revival where we was blowing the doggone lights out? No, I'm serious. We had lights blowing out. I replaced, I had a 16-channel mixer at that time. I replaced all the cords for that mixer two times. That's 32 XLR cords. And we kept having all through the services. And one day, Letitia is knocked out in the spirit and she's laying on the floor laughing uncontrollably. Every time she kicked her foot, through the PA system. And I said, there's the culprit. I said, come here. I checked her voltage. She has over 70 millivolts. And people don't believe in God, but I'm telling you something. You can measure in voltage revival. You say, Alan, you're nuts. No, I'm not, because I've done it. There were times when Belinda walked by me, I could feel the power coming out of my back, and it scared her bad because then she touched my back and power just hit her. She said, there's something bad wrong. I said, no, baby, it's okay. She said, it ain't okay. There's something coming out of you. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. What is that? That's the power of God. He created us. Sometimes our voltage goes up when we get in his presence. You say, Alan, prove it to me. Stick around. Stick around. People say, you know, uh, uh, where's where's the crowd? Where's all this? Why? Uh, why? Uh, what's God doing? I mean, you know, why, why isn't there more people? Why isn't there this? Uh, well, I don't know. Ask Paul that at the end of his ministry. Two people. And I'm not I'm not shooting for two people. Okay. <laughs> I'm just telling you, God's not always looking for popularity to do things. That's just not the way he is. Sometimes he might want to make a big display and other times he might want to say, well, Paul said it like this. I hate to go to this area, but he said some people are this just a comely part of the body. We don't expose that part to everybody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. <laughs> there are some things that are very special. They're very sensitive. They're very private. And God keeps those things away and doesn't show them to everybody, but they are a very important part of his body. So what I'm saying today is be, be uh, content with your place in the body of Christ. Godliness with content is great gain. My God, where am I going to? I'm glad you asked, Galatians 5, 6. Am I jumping around too much for you guys? You know what? Before I go to five, I love three. Oh, okay, I studied in five, but I'm going to three because it's all... Uh, one time I was in, in Galatians 3, and I don't expect it to happen today, but it was so funny. I went to Alabama to do a revival. I said, turn to your Bibles in Galatians. No, turn to your Galatians. Turn to Galatians in your Bibles. I get my words mixed up sometimes. Turn to Galatians in your Bibles. No, turn to your Bible. Get your Bibles and turn to Galatians. That's what I said. However I said it, it was close to that. And I remember all I did was I found it and I turned around and when I came back, I was in a church of old people that never seen revival. There's about 40 or 50, not very many. And God just took them all out. Boom. They just dropped in their chairs on the floor. And I thought, what the heck is going on? And it just kind of made Galatians 3 one of my favorites. <laughs> I never saw anything so funny. Uh, people, they didn't know how to laugh. I'm serious. They, they, they cover their mouth because something's coming out of it they're not used to. And you think their eyelids are going to blow right off of their face if they don't let go of their mouth because they're... <laughs> 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 yeah, I watched that happen. God just took them all out. And I was talking to them or getting ready to. I had to get them back to their senses halfway to get them to hear the word. I mean, it was so fun. I'm going to tell you, serving God is more fun than serving the devil. 
Serving God is more fun than serving yourself. You never know when he's going to do something, but you always know he's capable and he can do anything he wants at any time. He can bring joy into a room that has no joy if people would just accept what he's wanting to do. Glory to God. Okay, he starts off like this. Galatians 3, 1. Oh, you foolish Galatians, who's bewitched you? Who's bewitched you? You guys started off really good. What the heck happened to you? Who bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? You used to know how to obey. Remember I said obedience is what we need. Obey, obedience, get it? Just be obedient to the truth. Who's, uh, who's bewitched you that you don't obey it before? Whose eyes Jesus Christ has evidently set forth, crucified among you? You guys saw it happen. You saw him go in the grave. You saw him come out of the grave. You saw him go out on a cloud and he said, I'm coming back. You saw this happen. Who bewitched you? Who has done to you? I, well, I don't know what was done to him. That you only, it says, this only would I learn of you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law? or by the hearing through faith. That's how, that's how important faith is. But we lose our faith when we're taught that we can't use our faith. Well, you can't eat that. That's going to do this to you. Well, wait a minute. Jesus told me he'd bless that if I pray for it. Yeah, but that's not what science says. And by the way, you ain't healed yet. Don't walk on those feet. <laughs> Most people don't know it, but I've been blind. I've been crippled. I was never supposed to see again. I was supposed to lose my left leg. I've been thrown out of a car doing over 100 miles an hour. I could go on. I've been blown up twice. <laughs> You're the demolition man. <laughs> but I have. I forget about the rest of the stuff. Why? It's been so much. But I'm just telling you, God is real. There's nothing that's outside of His power. There's nothing outside of Him. I'm telling you, He is my all in all. He is your all in all. If you will let Him be who He can be. But we're taught not to believe. Alan, you can't eat that oyster. You don't eat it, I'll eat your share. Right. <laughs> This only would I learn of you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? By faith is how we did it. Amen. Not by somebody preaching the law to us. My God. Somebody said, have you heard about Jesus? I, who is he? He came, he did this, he built this planet for you, Alan. He did. This, I was pretty young. I just swallowed it all. Yeah, I was out in the Redwood Forest. Look at them trees. Oh, yeah. I said, he, he made those for you. They take a walk down to the Columbia River. Look at that. I said, yeah, baby, I'm going swimming. And I did. He made that river for you. I'm walking down a, 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 little, a, a little path there in the Redwood Forest. You ever heard of the Lewis and Clark Trail? That's where I was, on the Lewis and Clark Trail. I find a little owl. He's looking up at me, flapping his little wings. He said, look there, God brought you a little owl. I pick it up and I took it. I fed it bread and everything. God just wanted to show himself to you. And then, then we have a meeting and I say, do you love him? I said, my God. He built the river. He built the trees. He built the planet. He gave me a little bird to play with. He let me swim in the Columbia River today. He's giving me a good time. How could I not love him I saved right there born again is I never heard of that kind of salvation it came by faith I believed and when I believed I received I spoke in tongues I prophesied and I interpreted the same day and people say that doesn't exist well you're a little late if you're trying to say that on me because it happened before I knew it existed well you taught yourself how do you teach yourself something you don't know exists yeah good luck with that I got the full package and I still testify today I'm 65 and this gospel hasn't changed God hasn't changed my salvation hasn't changed have I made mistakes oh yeah but I'm not here to say I'm going to keep making mistakes I'm here to say I have a God that has taken my mistakes as far as the east is from the west and says watch this gone you say he can't do that oh yes he can he say it's not fair it is for me yeah, baby, that's good. I don't want the evil. Would you like some good? I don't believe it. Well, then you can't receive it. 
<laughs> you know, and lint never looks good on anybody, especially if you're wearing black. Okay. I did not say that, did I? <laughs> Have you suffered so many things in my name? Oh, excuse me. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? See, they, they had already been saved, already begun in the Spirit. They'd already seen signs and wonders, manifestations. Do you know that the prophets and other people just came out of the graves when Jesus resurrected? When he was crucified, when he went down, when he, uh, he took the keys of death and hell, they come out of their graves, baby. They walked the streets of Jerusalem. And these people he's talking to saw it. And then they go back to their old ways. <laughs> no, no, no. They saw dead people come out of the earth. And it says they walked for several days in the streets of Jerusalem. And then these people that saw this, Paul said, have you lost your stinking minds? Have you gone nuts? Are you so foolish having begun in the Spirit? Are you made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things, if be yet in vain? How therefore, he that ministers to you the Spirit and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? How do you get the miracle? You don't do it by the law. That's the exorcism way. Repeat after me. Whatever they say. You know, they got to speak in another language. What if the devil doesn't know that language? You know, you got formulas or you got faith that you believe God. You know, Paul, they got seven preacher sons. They see Paul casting out devils. They said, we can do that. Well, they had faith, but they didn't have faith in God. They had a formula. They had a formula. They saw that guy devil possessed, and they said, come on, guys. We saw Paul do it. We're going to do it. And they said, we adjure you, devil, come out in the name of the Jesus Paul preaches. Those devils looked at those guys, or the devil, and they said, wait a minute. Paul I know. Jesus I know. Who the hell are you? And it says, that devil kicked their butts. It, you know what? Somebody told me, I can't remember the exact way that this happened, but it wasn't pretty. It wasn't just a little beating that they got. I'll just leave it at that. I won't go into the in-depth things that happened to those boys. But I guarantee they didn't make that mistake again. But the thing is, Paul I know, Jesus I know, I haven't met you yet, and you don't have the authority, so I think I'll just have my way with you. And so when we know Jesus, it's not a formula, it's our name, is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that's Jesus' book. When you have Christ in you, the hope of glory, the devil sees that. You know, we got gangs today. It's like this. When you become born again, you put on the God colors. You are now identified. But the devil knows who you are too. He'll come at you with everything he's got. And if he can't get you, he'll come to your friends. If he can't get your friends, he'll go to your family. If he can't go to your family, he'll go to something. He'll go to a possession. He'll go to whatever it is that gets to you. What you got to do is stand in faith and tell him no further and draw the line. And stand believing and knowing and understanding with the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego attitude that if God delivers me, so be it. If he doesn't, he's still my God. If there is no deliverance for me today, here I am delivered into his hands. He will provide. He that believes with me, it says, will never die. He that believes in me will never die. We have life and life abundant. It doesn't matter here or there. Either place, we're God's. Either way, we belong to him. Either way, we never die. 
Amen. Either way, we never die. Okay. Now I can go to Galatians 5. Where was it? 5, 6. Pick up sticks. <laughs> For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision. And he's not talking about the male part. He's talking about the law. And it is the male part in a way that the Jewish people believe the score, the score swim, the four skin. <laughs> May the force be whacked off. <laughs> Just the skin. <laughs> But that is the seventh day, isn't it? The seventh day, just the skin, just whack, then no more skin. And so, it's the covering, basically. And anyway, that's tradition. And he says, but it's neither tradition or not tradition that avails anything in the law. That was a law, a law of principle, and it's pretty neat. You know, it kept you from being dirty. And uh, where in the heck are you? Uh, it's five, six, pick up sticks. Doesn't avail anything, Norm said, but faith which works by love. Remember I used to tell, I, I have said it so many times, faith is, I mean, love is the key that makes our faith work. It's the key to the vehicle. The faith works by love, and so people that are trying to make their faith work, but they don't love enough to do it because you're too defiled in your minds to be able to love. Did I just say that accidentally? I don't mean to say it like that, but you get this defilement that causes you not to be able to love. What's the defilement? Too many bad experiences, and you're holding on to the experience rather than to the blessing. I mean, is, or you understand what I'm saying. You got a hold of the thing that's defiling your mind. It's a corruption. It's a virus to your computer. Your computer, your brain, your mind. You get these things rattling around and you're holding on to them rather than letting love find its perfect place and come in and edify you. And then when you have the love of God in you, your faith can begin to work. Because Why? It's the love is already working in you, which is allowing you to have faith for others. To believe, as I say it like this, if God can save me, he can save anybody. If God can save me, he can save anybody. And God saved me. So that means he can save anybody. How do you know he saved you, Alan? I was there when it happened. Come on. <laughs> That's how I know. I was present, accounted for. <laughs> I'm saved. Say, so do you have a testimony? Oh, yeah. Did you get the blood? Yeah. I take the blood. And I have a word of testimony saved by the blood of the Lamb, the word of my testimony. I got a testimony. He gave me back my sight. He gave me back my, my health. He gave me back my leg. My God, he... I just, it just goes on and on and on. Serving God is so fun. I remember years ago, I was talking to somebody last night, really special. I was, uh, years ago, I did this worship service because God just has just given me some kind of a blessing where he's just always made it work for me. In almost 40 years of ministry, I've only missed one service in my life. That's kind of strange to think about. But I had one service. I, I, I didn't look so good for me. I couldn't even talk. <laughs> I, and they come and tell me they want me to lead worship in another church. And I can't even say no because I can't get a word out. <laughs> so I go. And I'll never forget, I was thinking, God, this is stupid. I said, at this pastor's request, I'm going to go do this. But I can't even speak. So I'm, I'm quietly praying this prayer. Get it? 
I can't get anything out, so I'm thinking, but my prayer, I know he hears because it says he discerns our thoughts. He discerns the intentions of the heart. So he can read us like we read a computer menu, like we read a text message. He can read all that stuff in us. That's, a, that's why it says it's a fearful thing to fall in the hand of the living God because he knows it all. So anyway, I go, and I, I go to this meeting, and they say, get up there and lead worship. So I get my guitar, and I stand up, not even being able to speak. And I think I might have done You Are So Beautiful, kind of like we started out today. And all of a sudden, I have the most gravelly, craziest voice I've ever heard in my life. And it's a very large group of people, and a lot of them are young, and they go crazy thinking I'm singing like Joe Cocker. <laughs> and I think, what the heck? They're just all going nuts, and I'm barely getting a squeak out. They're going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I think, see, God's not concerned with my abilities. He's concerned with my obedience. <laughs> That's all he wants, is our faithfulness. We don't really have to do much except for show up. If we will do that much, God will take us to new realms. How in the world did I get there off of Galatians 5? I better finish reading or else we'll be here all day talking. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision abideth anything nor uncircumcision by faith which works in love. He did run well. Who did? Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Is that not what he asked in Galatians 3 about not obeying the truth? This persuasion doesn't come from them that called you or from him that called you. He's not the one getting you to disobey. So who the heck is doing this to you? That you're believing the wrong things. Well, I, I went to cemetery, seminary. I went... I went, it sounded like Ernest, I went, I saw, I got blowed up. <laughs> no, that's what happens in semin seminary. Many times people get educated, they learn these things, and they learn them, but they're not quite on plumb. You all know what a plumb bob is. They're just a little bit off. And uh, uh, But what happens is, Jesus said it like this, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little bit of wrong just makes it all messed up. And so we get a little bit off. We say, well, you can't eat that. But, so, yeah, but God told me I could yesterday. Yeah, but I'm telling you today, that's bad for you. I know I'm probably going to get 100 text messages. What the heck are you preaching? I had her on that diet. She's doing good. I started out, I was doing good. Now you're saying you can eat rice <laughs> and not get fat. I'm just saying what we believe is what we receive. I don't want to take it to any deeper level than that. Another place, the Bible says, happy is the man that puts his trust in God. Happy. What do you want to be, happy or sourpuss? <laughs> a lot of people look like they're baptized in lemon juice. <laughs> I've seen faces wrinkle so bad that I, 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 want, I just want to have a meltdown laughing thinking about it. I mean, they, uh, you can tell they, they have frowned for years and just not got rid of the, the, the indentions. Have you ever seen that? Because I have. I said, my God, you know, what do you do for that? Botox. <laughs> God. Now, look, I've never done Botox, okay? I, just, I, I saw where people do that. I'm not even sure what it is. So I just said that because <laughs> I, think, I think it tightens your teeth or something, doesn't it? Or tightens whatever you put it on. Oh, Lord. This persuasion doesn't come from him that called you a little. Oh, look at that. I, I said it before I read it. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. 
I pray today that is my mind for you right here. That you'll be none otherwise minded. That you won't be led astray by just every wind of doctrine. That people won't tell you, well, you can't do this when God says you can. You can have life and you can have life abundant. That's what he came to give you. He didn't come to give you a hard time. He didn't come to take away everything and give you. You want to hear something? Uh, 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 as far as we're going in this, I'll tell you another story that's funny. You want to hear something funny? Okay, so I, I get I get a, a pastor that, that brought me into the ministry. His name was Wes Worker. He's an evangelist, probably apostle. I just don't know where he had been on eight 40-day fast. He's the only man that I know that's been on that many, and a couple of them a little over 40. And we prayed and we fasted a lot together. But he, he started Christ for the Nations with uh, T.L. Osborne. And uh, when T.L. Osborne went up north, he was from, uh, West was from South Africa. He says, this is where we part. <laughs> he didn't like cold weather. And so he started Christ for all nations as a division of Christ for the nations. And so at that time, I got to meet West because he is still up south, down south, whatever we are, up. We's in the south. <laughs> I meet Wes, and he mentors me and takes me under his wing. And uh, he says, you know, I've done some funny things in my life, but when we started Christ for the Nations, he said, T.L. Osborne and I, we made a, we took an oath of poverty. And I, there's nothing wrong in doing that. You know, that's what you want to do. But he says, you would never believe what happened. I said, well, come on, get the story going. I want to know what happened. You take an oath of poverty. Now you got one of the biggest organizations in the world and one of the most fruit bearing. And he says, well, we did this revival right after we took that oath. And he says, we was in a hotel room. He says, we filled it with money and we looked around because the offerings literally filled the hotel room. They had a room full of money. He says, we couldn't take it for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> he said, all that money came in, all we could do is just look at it. <laughs> you don't think God's got humor? <laughs> don't get caught up in every wind of doctrine. God will make you laugh somehow. <laughs> it'll, it'll give you something to think about that you'll never forget. But I think about that. I loved Wes. I loved him so much. He certainly led me to a lot of truth. One day we went out to eat, and we just finished a fast, and we went to some place where we could eat all we wanted to eat like two fools. I forgot what I was going to tell you. <laughs> That's what happens when I start thinking about the th Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I always, yeah, you know, when you first really get the, a dose of the Spirit, you got the Holy Spirit working in your life, and you're seeing miracles and stuff, and you're, oh, yeah, baby, I'm somebody. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about. You get full of God, you think you're somebody, you forget that it's Him doing it. <laughs> At least I've been through this. They all can be liars and say, I know I, I've never been self-righteous. But I hit that spot. And we're standing there in that restaurant just tanking down the food, man. We're piling it on our trays, and we're in the line. And I was talking kind of like doing a little judging. You know what I was talking about earlier, not judging other people. I was doing a little judging. And Wes just calmly, he was the most patient man. He's standing there next to me, yeah, Alan, yeah. He says, you think we're the only two going to make it? had a pause of silence. <laughs> There's a little bit of silence there for a minute. I thought, is he rebuking me? <laughs> yeah, I think he was. But it was a very calm, a calm rebuke. One other man I'm thinking of. He's German. He was a German evangelist, just went to be with the Lord. Reinhardt. 
in Reinhardt, somebody asked him, well, why does the Lord use you so much and not me? You know, the holier than I, thou guy. And Reinhardt says, well, I was trying to figure out a way to be nice. And he says, I got it. So I told him, it's like this. We're both burners on a stove. Same stove, same controls. He said, now I need to cook something and prepare it. And I walk up to my stove, being God, and he said, one burner is on and one isn't. Which one do you think I should use? If you like anybody else, you want to get the meal as quick as possible. You know, you want to get things done. That's why it's important to stay full of the Spirit. You want to be used? Get your burners on. Get full of God. You want to get full of God? Start believing God. Faith without works is dead, and you can't make your faith work without believing that it's going to work. And you can't make it work without doing something. That's the reason I'm here. You know what? I'm not here to build a church. I'm here to build an army. I'm not here to build a church. I'm here to empower a people. To get the truth out to where people hear and understand who they are in Christ. I mean, what's a church going to do? without the people being empowered. One person empowered by God is worth millions without his power. Once you have the power of God working in your life, nothing's impossible. To those that believe all things are possible, yeah, that scripture didn't work so good for me. John 15, it says, I love you. I'll give you whatever you ask for. People say, hey, it hasn't worked so good for me. Well, you need to go down a few pages and talk to James. You ask and you ask him this. <laughs> well, I never thought about that. He says, God can help you resist the devil. He says, I try to resist him, but, but he just stayed there and fought me. What well, did you try the part about submitting yourself to God, then resisting the devil? Well, yeah, but that didn't work so good. <laughs> that submission part. I'd rather be a free person, you know? I don't, I, don't, I don't need to submit, do I? Well, try resisting the devil without submission and see how that goes. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Have I taken you all just a little deeper? I mean, these things today were crystal clear to me. They weren't just a little clear. They were clear as clear gets. I didn't have to dig far to get to the truth, and God just kept revealing. I said, I got everything I needed with time left over. I had two people locked out of my door waiting to get in today. I forgot the door was locked. And I said, we thought you were asleep. I said, no, I've been up for a long time. Can you believe that? I was already up. I said, why? I done got everything from God. He's already spoke to me. Welcome. Welcome, I know what's going on now. I'm ready. Sometimes it just takes a while to enter in. Put your hands up today. Just lift them to God. See, the willing and obedient eat the fat of the land. Father, in obedience, we lift our hands to you. You say to lift holy hands to you. Why are they holy? Because you make them holy. I don't. You do. Father, we lift our hands. We declare you are the living God, Jesus. With you, all things are possible, Father. We submit ourselves to you today, God. I pray for an empowerment to resist the devil's unbelief as it knocks at our hearts. Father, I pray that you just put up a wall of fire, a hedge of thorns, God, that blocks it. Let us enter into the land, Father, of milk and honey. God, let us reap the reward of belief and obedience. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Whew. Glory to God. I hope you all got something today, because I did.